All right, so we got a patch today, which is really, really cool. Some new reworks with Nilfgaard, and I want to make sure that you guys are locked and loaded with a pretty cool deck using Jan Calvit or Jan Calvit, I'm not sure. Uh, but regardless, we got a deck made up for you that you guys can play. Now, the cool part about it is that Calvate got two extra provisions. So we got some more space to work, and I want to show you what I've been playing with this morning that got some solid success, and I want you to play it as well. So I don't have a name for this yet, so I'll let you name it. All right, here's the deck. So this is a deck that we were actually playing a little bit before the patch happened, and I was going to actually make this deck video yesterday, but then I realized, well, Nilfgaard is actually getting a big rework, so let's see what we can do, and maybe that the deck will um, be completely obsolete, or maybe it will actually get better, and it got better. And it's not just because of the fact that we got two extra provisions on John Calvit, but the fact that there's actually some great bronze support that really give this deck some, some legs to uh, push for that round three victory that we're going for. Now, a lot of my decks, again, like I said, they're not the top tier, super awesome pro rank, uh, get you to, uh, you know, an open qualifier kind of thing deck, but they're fun to play. And this one actually has a little bit of potential with it. So I'll go through the cards again, and then you can uh, uh, sort of take notes, and then I'll give you a little bit about the strategy of how it works. All right, so as usual, we're gonna go with the bronze package first. So I have one slave driver, just a standard four drop. I've got two Nausicaa sergeants. These are great, again, just the easy four provision um, engine piece. Now here's the one of the new ones. The Daethwin Arbalist, and I really like the rework for this card because it is a four for four, so the cost transformation of the provision is actually on point with the four for four, but it's also a good tech card. This is something that you mulligan away against, um, you know, decks that you don't think you're gonna have to play, uh, that play out of the graveyard to any degree. But if you're playing against monsters, if you're playing against Skellige, this is a great tech card to put in there to help you out a little bit and maybe handcuff them for later rounds and really ruin a little bit of their uh of their jam so i got one of those i have one emissary the emissary is in there typically to sort of protect some of your engine pieces uh but also to pair with gregoire i have two recruits now six for three there's a lot of soldiers in this deck uh, you'll have a lot of soldiers so you'll have a lot of places to dump those three points that the recruit plays and he also triggers your sergeants as well so this is a solid uh, six for five card that also protects some of your engines Two armored, uh, Alba armored cavalry, just lock things up, no big deal. Now here's one of my new favorite bronze cards, Alba pikeman. It's kind of like a trebuchet on the front row. So uh, no GOT spoilers that much, but if you know what the Unsullied are from Game of Thrones, you know that in the last episode, they're on the front lines and they're poking and they're prodding. So I guess there was a slight little, um, maybe a little spoiler there, but I'm not gonna give too much away. But the, the, the big pikes in the front row, poking and prodding, I love these. It's a four for five, and a lot of the times that four body is enough, of, uh, enough beef there to keep them alive for a little while. They'll absorb some damage, uh, or they'll pull out a gold uh, removal card out of your opponent's um, hand. But oftentimes those cards usually translate to about seven or eight value. They do pop off for a little bit. Um, worst case is it just pushes your opponent to the ranged row, which has some significance as well. I've got one Nilf Guardian Knight. No need to uh, really talk about this. Ointment, new ointment. Now, boost a unit by four. Now, if it's a soldier, heal it first. Lots of soldiers in here and lots of soldiers with big bodies, be it the slave infantry, be it the um, the pikemen, etc. So if they're taking damage, this could easily be a seven point um uh, heal. So the three points of heal plus the four points of buff. So I have one ointment in there. Uh, I started with two. I didn't like two. So I put I put the one in there instead. All right. Uh, other bronzes. I have two slave infantries. Easy. Uh, you know, uh, if your opponent looks like he's trying to set up a Gregoire, turn something around and uh, get those points back. This is a, a ceiling of nine points for seven. But at the same time, you could definitely pair this up with one of the golds, which we'll talk about in a sec. Now, in the uh, low provision slot of gold, Peter. Peter's been great. I've been bumping into a lot of um, uh, Queen Arrakis, and uh, he has been able to just kind of keep things in check, either be it on the Glusty Warp or on the Slizzard that just gets big and out of control. All Bricked, this is one of your combo pieces. All brick deploy, put a card to the top of your deck. This, typically, you play in round one or two to assure a good draw. Not in this case. This is a round three card, and I'll explain to you later, but we've got Albrecht in here. 
Vream Day or Vream Day or Green Day, whatever, regardless. This guy, Mr. Mustache Face. Uh, what he does is he's a soldier as well, but what he does is boost an allied soldier on a soldier and all copies of it by two. Now you will have options for this because you have a lot of duplicate copies of soldiers. Now, obviously, if you can get four slave infantry on the board, that is your nuts play. That's the top tits that you can hit with uh, Vreemd. But at the same time, you'll have two Alba pikemen. You'll have two Alba car uh, cavalry. You'll have two uh, recruits. So you'll have, uh, you know, uh, two Nausicaa sergeants. You'll have plenty of opportunities to actually maximize your um, your your potential with Reamed. So don't worry about it. Uh, pretty solid there. A sire. A sire is a pretty good card. Um, now, she is usually used to pull Roach, which we have in the deck as well. Put Roach back in the deck and bring him out as a nine point play late in the game. But she does have other applications and you'll, it's very rare, but in certain cases, if you do have to use your Albrick later, you could use uh, or use some big cards, for instance, like Leo, which we have as well. Uh, but if you suspect that maybe the combo that we're going to show you is not working while, worthwhile, use a Sire to put another card that you used in early rounds, like Leo or like Vreemd or something, back in the deck. Then you play um, then you play Albrick to put it on the top, and then you use your Calvate. But we'll get to that later. Um, Gregoire, simple. You know how to do it. You can pair this up with your Emissary uh, to get an easy target for it. I have Vivian de Tabri. Uh, what she does is basically sets a unit's power to its provision cost. Now you have plenty of targets, but the main target for this is going to be our boy at the top, which we'll show you in a sec. But I also have Leo. Leo is just uh, a card that I typically use uh, to gain tempo in round one to assure that I have last say, which is uh, fairly important. So I have Leo in here as well. Now my new Favorite gold card from Nilfgaard, Sweers. This is a great card. Uh, and the reason why it's awesome is because not just because you're seizing three points, but you're seizing engines from your opponent that you could potentially use on your own as well. Uh, I played a game with this, and I will show you that game in another video. But I played a game uh, with this against a Rakus Queen where I was down by 50 points. I Sweers his Vran and then went to town and killed a absolute nutty amount of, uh, of units and then my Vran went off and just mowed down his his entire board and I ended up winning by about 15 or 20 points. It was epic. I'll show you that game in another video but Swears is great. You want to use this early I, I suspect um, if you can. It's good against Nazca Sergeants, against Arbalists, against Vrans. Uh, it's good against a lot of things so just hang on to that. Uh, what else do we got here? I also have, I showed you Roach. And finally, the Pièce de Résistance is our boy Zoltan. Zoltan is a 15 provision, one strength unit. So clearly he's got some significant juice on the board. But the fun part about it is that that paired up with Vivian de Tabri is a bomb play. Because usually what you'll be doing is you'll be putting her on the top of the deck with Albrecht. So she's five. She boosts Zoltan by 14. That is a 19 point last play. Big, not the biggest I've ever done, but big. Uh, not to mention Zoltan is also swiping the board or boosting his own side, so he is getting some extra value. So you can really swing for upwards of 30 some odd points with that last play. So when you think you're down and out, you very well could not be. So I'll tell you, tell you a little bit about how this deck works. And uh, typically the three card combo that you want is you want Albrecht in hand, you want Zoltan in hand, and you want Vivian in the deck for round three. Now, Vivian in the deck or Zoltan in the deck, neither of those, uh, it, it won't break uh, break apart the actual uh, combo if Zoltan's in your deck and Vivian's in hand, but the ideal way to do it is to have Zoltan in hand and Vivian in deck, but those can be reversed, it's not a big deal. So the way to do this is as you're playing round three, your last play is going to be um, Zoltan and then using your Calvate to get the Vivian to play on it. Now. It's always it's always best to have last say. Obviously, there's no huge revelation in that, but um, that is a big big play. So typically, what I do is I'll play Zoltan to lacerate a row, and then I will uh, play Vivian out of my deck and boost him up. It's usually a big enough play to save the day. Um, um, so what you want to do, the strategy is essentially. Play to a, uh, you could play to a long round, depends on what your opponent is playing, but you want to ensure last say typically. But um, in the game, what you're going to be doing is uh, 
towards the end with like a couple cards left, you'll drop your Albrecht onto uh, the range row. You'll put your um, Vivian on top, and then you'll be dropping your Zoltan. You'll be swiping a board. You'll be playing your Vivian with your Calvit, and then you'll be boosting, and then it's all good. Everything else you have here is usually going to be used typically just to win round one. Uh, because that combo piece itself is pretty big and significant to win you the game all by itself. Uh, so Vreemd with your um, with your sergeants, uh, sorry, with your soldiers, you can play Swears early, you could play Leo early, you could play Peter early. Just ensure that you get that win in round one and you should be good to go. Once again, let's go through the cards. One Slave Driver, two Nausicaa Sergeants, one Deathwen Arbalest, one Emissary. I have two Recruits, two Alba Armored Cavalry, two Alba Pikemen, one Nilf Guardian Knight, one Ointment, Peter Sar Gwynleve, I think, two Slave Infantry, I have Albrecht, Vreemd, a Sire, Gregoire de Gorgonzola, Vivian de Tabri, I have Leo Bonhart, Sweers, Roach, and our boy with the haircut, Zoltan. This is all under Calvate's 17 points of provision. Ladies and gentlemen, I have uh, temporarily named this Birdie Num Num because of the uh, Duda Companion, Duda Agitator, but you guys are more than welcome to name this the way you want. Push hard in round one, make sure you got last say in round three, and then go bananas. There you go, Birdie Num Num. I wish I could really be better at naming decks, but Birdie Num Num is kind of the way that we're gonna go with it. It's an old Peter Sellers a line from the movie The Party, if I'm not mistaken, Birdie Num Num. Regardless, uh, it has um, it uses the bird to swipe or boost, and then Vivian to boost your Zoltan, and then you laugh your way to the bank. This is the deck, and I do have some pretty saucy games that I played with it this morning. Again, like I said, all deck lists will be accompanied by a separate gameplay video that I will post either later in the day or the next day, so you can keep an eye out for this deck tomorrow, uh, probably with some more gameplay. Uh, nonetheless, if you like the deck, please leave your comments. If you have any suggestions, I would love, love, love to hear them. And you can drop them here in the comment section on YouTube as well. And as always, it does so much for me if you guys hit that subscribe uh, subscribe button here on YouTube. Costs you nothing and does big ups for me. You can catch me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash watchflake or on Twitter at watchflake. Be kind to one another. I love you all and I will see you soon. Adios.